Thank you very much. Let me proceed on the established protocol and acknowledge all my brothers and sisters here, but permit me to acknowledge my elder brother, Molbi Mohammed bin Sali, who is the Amir a missionary of the Ahmadiyya Mission here in Ghana. And let me also acknowledge His Holiness Mirza Masru Ahmad, who is the leader of the Ahmadiyya movement in the whole world. And to also acknowledge my uncle, Father Alaji Mama Idrisu, who is the chairman of the Council of Elders of the NDC party. Everybody else, I say, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish to thank you for your kind invitation to be a part of this very auspicious event, which is the annual Jalsa Salana, Solana held here every year. This event brings Ahmadis from all over the country and even outside. I was remarking to Molvi Bensali when I was introduced to the delegation from Burkina Faso and uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin. It brings people not only, Amadis not only from Ghana, but from outside our country, to not only renew their faith, but also to reflect on how to advance the teachings of the Amadia denomination. I must say, this is not the first time I'm setting foot on these grounds, the Garden of Ahmad, and I can safely say that I'm not a stranger here. And I wish to associate with Mulvey Bin Sali when he said, I'm safer amongst you than even amongst my own security. This Jalsa Salana has the theme, a century of Islamic revival in Ghana, and it celebrates the achievements of the Ahmadiyya mission since its introduction in Ghana in 1921. Indeed, I listened attentively to the rest of what I could catch of Alaji Anderson's narration of the history of the Ahmadiyya mission in Ghana. And I must say, it's not been an easy road. It's been a very hard and torturous road but it teaches us lessons of perseverance and courage because the early missionaries who brought Ahmadiyya religion to Ghana were persecuted and they had to undergo a lot of self-sacrifice in order that we achieve what we have today. And so on an occasion like this, we pay tribute to the early missionaries and pray that for those who have gone before, Allah grant them Janato Fredaus. I was also intrigued and happy that the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission played a very important part in the establishment of the Hilal Committee and the Hilal Conference. Uh, when Alaji Anderson was narrating how the Hilal Committee came about, I listened attentively because as vice president, I had the opportunity to attend several of the Hilal conferences. And one particularly struck me, the one in Bolgatanga, where we held the Hilal conference in the Catholic Social Center. And uh, it was a symbol of religious tolerance that Ahmadis hold very high, because it was a conference to decide on the Ramadan and uh, the sighting of the moon. And we couldn't hold it anywhere but in the Catholic Social Center, which is a Christian uh, denomination. And I said that that highlights the principle of religious tolerance that Ahmadis uh, hold very dear. The Ahmadi mission is committed to religious tolerance, as I've just said, and they love to live peacefully side by side with people of other faith. Aside from that, Ahmadis stand for peace because Islam is a religion of peace. And so nowadays when we see those aberrations where people believe that they must kill other human beings in the name of jihad, it goes completely against the tenets of Islam. Aside from that, a key principle of 
the Amadi mission is service to mankind. And that is why you find the mission investing in many areas such as health, such as education, and such as agriculture. We all know of the TI Amadia uh, schools all over the country, and we also are aware of the hospitals that this mission has built in many parts of uh, Ghana. The tenets of the Amadia denomination are principles that underpin not only national peace for us in our country, Ghana, but also for world peace. If all of us abided by these tenets that we have tolerance for each other's faith and that we want to live in peace and that we want to serve mankind, that is be each other's brother's keeper, I don't think there will be any tensions or war in this world. And this reflects in the Ahmadis love for discipline and order and I think it's commendable and must be reflected by other uh, faith-based groups in this country. And so on the note of peace that I just mentioned, I recognize that this year is an election year and there's a need for peace for us to be able to hold a successful election. I want to affirm to you that the party that I lead, NDC, is a party of peace. And if there will be any violence, I can pledge to you and assure you that we would not be the cause of that violence. But let me say, while we advocate for peace, we always talk about peace in our country, we always talk about peace during elections, we must not forget that there must also be justice. Because without justice, there can be no peace. And so I urge that all the faith-based organizations, including Amadia, you include in your advocacy for peace, also the advocacy for justice. Because it is the lack of justice that leads to an abrogation of peace. And I can give two recent ex examples. We all know what happened during the by-election in Ayawaso West Wogo. During that by-election, a group of people, masked men in national security uniform, some in police uniform, opened fire and injured several of our supporters. As I speak, one of them is still bedridden since that time. He was shot in the leg, he has lost use of that leg, and because of that, he is unable to go back to work. And he's had to survive on the little humanitarian support that some of us continue to give him. I mean, for such a person, justice is needed. Yes, the president set up a commission of inquiry. The commission of inquiry gave his recommendations which asks that some people be sanctioned. As I speak, nobody has been sanctioned because of Ayahuasca West Wagon. It also recommended compensation for the people who were injured. As of now, they haven't received any such compensation. And that's why I say, in addition to advocating for peace, we must also advocate for justice. Eight people lost their lives in the last election of 2020. Three of them in Techiman and the other five in other locations. There has been no investigation. There's been no inquiry. Their parents and loved ones are living in misery. There have been no compensation to these families. And that is why I have said several times that if Allah favors the NDC and we come into office, we will make sure that these people get justice, that those who are responsible are held to account and that compensation is paid to the families of those who were injured or have died as a result of this violence. To have justice, we must have an electoral commission that is fair and neutral. We must have an electoral commission that is fair and neutral, not one that springs surprises on the political stakeholders wake up one morning and announce that you are shifting the election date. And but for our protest, 
the Electoral Commission was determined to hold presidential elections in November this year. Wake up one morning and say, we won't use indelible ink anymore. Everybody knows that you cannot refuse to use indelible ink unless you introduce a new constitutional instrument into parliament. And as long as you don't have a new constitutional instrument, you cannot unilaterally declare that you are not going to use indelible uh, ink. And so we need an electoral commission that is fair and just and is neutral amongst all the stakeholders in order for us to have a peaceful election. If we must have peaceful elections, we must have security services that are neutral, security services that are loyal only to the state and not to any political party. And that is why I find strange the police service disassociation from the statement made by one of their own about the role of the military in elections. And I think he was right. The primary responsibility for election security is that of the Ghana Police Service. The Ghana Police Service is responsible for the task force that makes sure that elections are peaceful. And they invite their sister security services to participate. And so if somebody says, election security is the baby of the police service. It's true, it is their primary responsibility. But because there are 40,000 police uh, polling centers and we do not have 40,000 policemen in this country, the police service alone cannot do it. And that's why they invite immigration, fire service, and prisons to join them. And they invite the military too, but the military are not primarily responsi responsible for election security. The military are deployed in particular locations, and they are only called when the police service cannot handle a situation. And so if somebody says the primary responsibility of election security is for the police, and as he said, it, the, uh, election security is the baby of the police service, I agree with him, he's right. It's the primary responsibility of the IGP and the police service to provide us with security, and other security services complement their efforts and particularly the military. They're not supposed to be in polling stations. They're not supposed to be in collation centers. They're supposed to be deployed in safe locations and are called only when the police cannot handle a situation. And so I find it strange the police dislocating themselves from this uh, statement because I don't see what the DCOP said wrong. And so like I said, religious organizations might advocate both justice and peace in order that we have successful elections. Our country, Ghana, is at the crossroads and there's no doubt that we have to take urgent steps to consolidate our democracy. This election of 2024 is probably the most critical election we're going to have since 1992. And we need a government that is trustworthy and truthful to the people. We need a government that will tell the people the truth at all times and not use propaganda and miscommunication to make us think that things are okay when we know things are really not going in the right direction. We need a government that will take courageous steps to turn around our economy. And that's why, among other policies, I have advocated the 24-hour economy that would allow, give incentives to businesses to run 24 hours a day, day and night, in order that we can create more jobs for our young people and extricate our people from poverty. I'm standing as the presidential candidate of the National Democratic Congress. And inshallah, if Allah is gracious to us, and grants us victory. I pledge that we will work closely with religious leaders to reclaim the moral soundness and the values that our society held dear in the past. As the world continues to modernize, we have continued to lose the value systems that our ancestors and our great grandfathers taught us. We were taught not to steal, we were taught not to tell lies, who were taught not to be dishonest, and yet because of modernization, social media, and all the other new media we are exposed to, a lot of those values that we held dear are beginning to dissipate. 
and I pledge that we'll work with religious organizations to see how we can consolidate the morality that was handed over to us by our ancestors. We will confer with religious organizations to review the curriculum of our basic education and secondary education in order that we can infuse more moral education into the curriculum and also to infuse more education on responsible citizenship and patriotism in the curriculum. I remember when we were young and in primary school and secondary school, in our curriculum, we had to learn religious and moral education, RME, and it was compulsory for all of us. And I think that it instilled certain values in me that I continue to strive to live by. Aside from that, in elementary school, uh, for us, we had a course they called civic education. And under civic education, we were taught responsible citizenship, how to be a responsible citizen of Ghana. We were taught how to be patriotic to our nation, how to respect our national anthem and be useful ambassadors of our country. Aside from that, we also taught ethics and courtesy, simple courtesy, how to get off your seat in a bus when you see an elderly person with a walking stick, you give, as a young person, you give up your seat and let them sit down. We even taught how to uh, etiquette at the dining table. You don't eat with people and talk with your mouth full of food. You don't eat and belch loudly to the discomfort of the other people you are eating with. These were all things that we were taught when we were children, and these have remained with us until now. At least I don't belch when I'm with strangers eating and uh, make them uncomfortable. We also would want, and we are having a policy dialogue, uh, currently NDC policy dialogue, and we're discussing issues to do with education. And we're going to come and confer with religious organizations that, uh, in, to see how we can strengthen the collaboration between governments and the religious organizations in the management of our secondary our schools, both at the basic and secondary uh, level, and also to collaborate in strengthening healthcare. We know that if you look, compare the management of hospitals under the control of missions and those under the control of Ghana Health Services, you find that there's more order and discipline in the mission hospitals than there are in the government hospitals. And so we'll confer and see how we can collaborate to uh, uh, consolidate our strengths in this regard. Aside from that, we have a proposal to encourage more religious organizations to go into agriculture and agribusiness. I know that the Ahmadiyya Mission has some agricultural ventures. And on these grounds that we are standing today, it was established by Kwame Nkrumah, our first president, as the Pomazi Poultry Farm. And uh, it was acquired by the Ahmadiyya Mission when it was put on divestiture. I'm happy to hear when I was talking with Mulvey that the mission is still keeping the poultry farm going, but uh, it's not been easy. Uh, he says it's not on the scale that it was in the days of Kwame Nkrumah. And uh, he said, oh, then, I said, oh, then government should help you to scale up your poultry production. And he said, when you come, you say it, so that when you win, I'll follow you, I'll chase you to do it. And so, Moby, I wish to say it, that if Allah is gracious and I'm president, I will help you to scale up this, your poultry farm, so that it becomes a model for all other religious groups to emulate. We can do poultry farming, religious groups, we can do livestock rearing, we can do aquaculture, we can set up farms, and I believe that um, uh, under an administration of NDC, we'll collaborate with religious organizations to set up farms, to set up agro-processing businesses so that we can add value to the crops that we produce here in Ghana. Let me commend the chair of the National Commission for Civic Education for her very uplifting statement that she gave here this morning, and I want to add my voice to hers to call on all our citizens to participate in, in, in our politics. 
There's nothing that bars Ahmadis or Christians or uh, people of other faith from participating in, in politics. And as the uh, great philosopher said, he said the price that we pay, that wise people pay for refusing to participate in public affairs is to be governed by the foolish ones. And so we must all participate. And I wish to uh, appeal especially to our young people not to give up hope. I hear a lot of young people uh, say they won't vote because they don't see the purpose of voting. I implore you, you must vote. You must take part in electing the government that is going to govern you for the next four years. Otherwise, you have no cause to complain if uh, a, a, a government comes that does not do the things that will make your life meaningful. And so I think that it is something uh, to add my voice to hers, to encourage all of us to participate in the electoral process. I announced um, uh, about two weeks ago when I went for the, when I went for the Ghana Muslim Mission uh, function in uh, Kumasi. And uh, at that uh, mission, at that function, Sheikh Amin Bonsu mentioned the issue with um, uh, Muslims praying on different days as a result of the confusion about the sighting of the moon and, and, all, and all others. And um, I think today when Alaji Anderson spoke, he spoke about the reason why the Hilal Committee was set up in order to avoid the confusion that was existing in respect of Muslims pray, praying on different days instead of on exactly the day recommended by the Hilal uh, Committee. And so at that event in um, Kumasi, I did um, make a statement that if Allah is gracious to the NDC and we come into uh, government, we will reconfigure the holidays. We currently have 13 holidays in Ghana. We'll reconfigure the holidays so that we still have 13 days, but we'll allocate one of those holidays to the Muslims on, on Eid al-Fitr. And so there'll be two days uh, of holiday on Eid al-Fitr so that if even there is confusion with the sighting of the moon, both prayers will be said on days that are holidays. And so the Muslim fraternity will have three holidays instead of the current two. But one of them will be added to Eid al-Fitr so that wherever there's confusion about the sighting of the moon and people pray on different days, it will still be a holiday for them to be able to rest on that particular day. I also noticed the poor nature of your road. And if there's one promise I can give you, if Allah is gracious and I become president, the next uh, Jalsa Solana I'll come to, I'll come on a more comfortable road than what I came on. We would make sure that we uh, re modernize the road, put bitumen on it so that uh, we stop uh, uh, spreading dust on the people living alongside the road. I think that these grounds deserve a better road than what we came on. And so on this uh, occasion, I want to thank all of you and to thank Molvi for your kind welcome and hospitality when I arrived here. And I know that this in, uh, organizing this Solana invo involves a lot of uh, money. Um, I remarked to Molvi that the numbers are increasing. I've attended several Jalsa Solanes, but today's numbers are so uh, overwhelming that I'm sure that it has cost you a lot to be able to organize this. And so we came with a little contribution to also uh, assist. And so we brought you some Malta Guinness soft drinks, uh, 300 cartons of them. We brought some bottled water, 200 cartons of bottled water, and then a soft drink called Alvaro. We brought 200 cartons of that. And then I also have in my hand 50,000 CDs to support you in this um, uh, function. I thank you very much, and may Allah richly bless us. Thank you.